Hello everyone. I hope you are doing well in your exam and uh, I wish you all the very best for your endeavors and you get your COC as soon as possible. So today upon receiving several requests I would like to cover a uh, couple of important questions. Okay, this uh, particular uh, stuff will cover your two three uh, three in fact questions often asked by surveyor uh, we are fo uh, focusing today on STCW convention so first of all uh, we'll discuss uh, a very important and independent question that is what is the difference between a code and convention so this is often asked by surveyor so if we talk about convention then STCW convention or STCW code it's very confusing correct so there is a difference between convention and code because if we talk about convention that it is mandatory for all the contracting parties when it enters into force okay convention is an agreed set of rules on a particular matter you can say that convention is a universal set and code is a subset to the convention it's a branch of convention okay the convention is mostly triggered by what we say is a major incident like if we talk about solace convention then it came in force because of what because of titanic incident if we talk about marpole then there was a lot of there were a lot of um, uh, what we say is a uh, uh, pollution related incidents uh, marine pollution that's the reason marpole came into force so now we have ballast water convention as well a code on the other hand is normally recommendatory we recommend it unless it is made mandatory like often we talk about stcw uh, code then part a is mandatory and part b is recommendatory so unless the code part is specified in the convention that so will be mandatory otherwise by default code is recommendatory okay i hope this is clear so a code to a convention is a part of convention so code is a part of convention it provides the international standards required for elements mentioned in that particular chapter of the convention now uh, why we say because if you if you look at the convention so there are references for particular code now the examples of code like lsa code ffa code isps code isn code okay so if you imagine all these are different separate books heavy books hefty thick books so if all these lsa code ffa code isps code ism code will have been included in the SOLAS convention then you can imagine how much lengthy and how much borders or boredom it will create in reading SOLAS convention so just give a reference so the people interested they can refer to the particular code book so I hope this is clear now uh, let's focus our uh, agenda to today's uh, discussion that was STCW so what is STCW so that is standards for training certification and watchkeeping for seafarers that is STCW convention 1978 so uh, it's an international standard set of training course for seafarer decided in 1978 this this was brought into action in 1984 amended in 1995 and again in 2010 in manila so uh, today our agenda for today was this also of 2010 Manila Convention okay where the amendment to the STCW took place hence the terms uh, terms the Manila amendment these 2010 amendments were decided in 2012 and came into force January 2017 okay so uh, uh, this was the uh, this was just a brief description about STCW now when we talk about STCW convention chapters these are these are often uh, sometimes some surveyor asks name the chapters how many chapters we have in STCW convention so first one is the general provision second one when we talk about is master and deck department third one is engine department fourth is radio communication and radio operators chapter fifth that is special training requirements for personnel on certain types of 
ships. Chapter 6 would be emergency, occupational safety, security, medical care and survival functions. When we talk about chapter 7, it is alternative certification. Then we have chapter 8, which is watch keeping. So we are not going in depth for all these chapters. <coughs> Sorry. Uh, what we focus today is the our next part of uh, the agenda. That is, what's the difference between STCW 95 and 2010? Some of the surveyors, they asked these questions. STCW 2010, we can say, is an updated version of STCW 95. Major changes and amendments were made by engine department followed by other structure of the ship system. The important changes to each chapters of STCW convention and code include. Now, when we talk about the major changes, what all were there, so you can answer these things to the uh, surveyor. They'll be quite happy to hear your answers. So when I talk about this one, then it is like first one is revalidation of higher and managerial level officer for certificate of competency that is COC of which we are uh, doing it. So we have to revalidate it any, uh, by any government authority. New and improved training guidance for crew and officer serving on board. So there are different guidelines for the officers and the crew who all are serving on board. Okay, now when we talk about the third point that the new requirement for MARPOL awareness which includes training in leadership and teamwork. Okay, so these were the leadership training. Okay, so these were the requirement. Now, when we move ahead, then it is stringent measures for preventing fraudulent certificate of competency to flow in the international market. So now you must have heard that there are uh, COCs which are coming without appearing exams and all these things. So uh, to stop that and to catch uh, uh, for that, so we have stringent measures that were adopted so that these can be taken care of. Okay. Now when we talk about that, rest hour on board has been increased from 70 hours to 77 hours per week for decent working of seafarer on board okay so these uh, rest hours you must have been filling on uh, ships the rest hours every day okay so this is the requirement that one individual at his own only should be able to fill the rest hours okay so nobody else on his behalf can fill the rest hours but uh, as whatever it is case maybe introduction of electrotechnical ETO jo ETO ka there is a lot of boom in the market and companies are recruiting electrotechnical officer with approved training and COC so unka bhi training hoga they'll also be have training for six months all those electrical engineers electronic telecommunication and they will also have COC COC more facilities and better training for junior engineer and cadets to tackle the problem of shortage of officers so we can train the junior engineer and of because there may not be an officer on board like we must go do away with third engineer or something like that so we can train the junior engineers so that they can be more updated with official uh, jobs updated drugs okay alcohol policy and stringent medical examination so stringent uh, stringent medical examination now there was a uh, one of my friend who is sailing with stena stena mm, so what they uh, they even check your cavity so his medical was cancelled because uh, he was not able to uh, his tooth had some cavity so you can imagine this is the level of examination and they even tell you to lift some weight okay so this is the level of uh, medical examination so these these were the uh, result of to stcw 2010 okay new amendments for able seamen to have a certificate of competency for boarding vessel so these were the new amendments which came in force now next when we talk about the new methods of training in modern technology like electronic chart display and information system egdis egdis ka training this is basically for deck department not for engine so ab also for deck department so major things what we are discussed till now was the engine department now few of them were for this uh, 
Deck Department, stringent competency norm for ship staff serving on tanker, gas and chemical carriers. So these are more volatile and prone to accidents, whether it is uh, fatal one or whether it is for the, what we say is for the environment. Now, when we talk about new, uh, new and improved requirement for ISPS training and also training to tackle the situation of piracy attack. So we have uh, these piracy drills on board. Why? Because of 2010 uh, amendments that took place in STCW. Inclusion of modern training method in tr introducing distance learning and web-based learning. So we have now web-based learning and distance learning were introduced. So this on DG Shipping profile also you see that ADU Academy. So you have to have that minimum learning hour before you can appear for that exit exam. So these are the requirement of 2010 STCW. Okay. New training regulations for ship staff in polar water and personal operating dynamic position positioning system. So we have DP vessels. DP vessels are DP1 or DP2 vessels. So we have new training requirement for ships which are operating in polar water. So you know polar, polar water, this is a very adverse condition. Okay. And personal operating in DP vessels. These are specially vessels like platform supply vessels wherein they have to keep their vessel in position so dp uh, they help in taking the wave and equivalently they oppose so that the ship is in uh, balanced condition okay now when we talk about polar code so it came in force in 1 january 2017 so which says that we, we one has to have the polar uh, protective uh, protective thermal clothing ice removal equipments okay enclosed lifeboat so this enclosed lifeboat because uh, uh, then we may get exposed to the surrounding the adverse climatic conditions visibility in ice freezing rain and snow condition double hull tankers so we have double hull tankers requirement specially for all those though uh, everywhere now it is double hull Okay, so there also have we have uh, um, prohibit prohibition of limit of discharge of oil, chemical, sewage, garbage, food waste, and many other substances. So these these are included in polar code. So this is a separate question. If somebody asks you about polar code, so you can tell that it came in force in 1 January 2017. So we have protective clothing, ice removal equipment, enclosed lifeboat, visibility in ice, freezing, rain and snow condition double hull tankers provide a limit to discharge of oil chemical sewage garbage food waste and many other substances so these are polar code now an initiative to is taken by imo to cope up the shortage of seafarers world by worldwide by starting go to sea campaign because often you see why there is a rush till class 4 coc and after that you find there are a lot of openings and vacancy, uh, vacancy. The reason being is that after their first sale as a COC, people that are trend, especially for India also, so they leave this uh, shipping industry. Okay, so that is the reason. We have more in the upper level, management level, than as compared to the operational level. So STCW 2010 basic training. So we have a basic safety course. What other five modular course STCW course we were doing separately. Now we have compiled, they have compiled it as basic safety course. Okay. So when we talk about this STCW firefighting and fire prevention, personal PST, EFA, PSSR and proficiency for seafarers with designate STSD. Okay. And we have one extra security course that is proficiency in maritime security awareness we also have refre refresher training for fpff af uh, advanced firefighting aff okay proficiency in survival craft pssr and proficiency pscrb okay so these these things we have they have updated it for us so now you can see the image and picture for all these things okay so i hope uh, this is clear for you and uh, we hope and uh, wish you all the best uh, for your exams and uh, today we covered what is the difference between a code and a convention then we saw at stcw just a brief idea of stcw 
how many chapters are there okay and then we went on to the difference between STCW 95 and 2010 basically we saw what new things were brought up in STCW 2010 okay and then in in that we discuss also discussed about polar code okay so what are the requirement for polar code and what is a polar code so all those provisions we discussed thank you so much thank you for your uh, valuable time and uh, i wish you all the best for your future endeavors please do uh, share us your valuable and timely feedback so that we can improvise upon our lessons and as well as for, uh, if you have some suggestions and if you want uh, some topics to be covered so that also you can share we'll try and share with you all thank you so much thank you all the best